I compiled this video last night featuring the deadliest real-life crocodile attacks covered on the channel thus far. From the notoriously aggressive and always deadly Nile crocodiles of Africa to the enormous saltwater crocodiles of Australia. These are four of the world's deadliest known crocodile attacks. Welcome to an animal's attack. For over two decades, a mysterious creature that lurked beneath the depths of Lake Albert in Uganda was often described as legendary and monstrous. Just hearing his name would send shudders down the spines of locals in the villages surrounding the lake, and with good reason, as the massive Nile crocodile was responsible for having killed 83 people during a 14-year reign of terror. This is the story of Osama, Uganda's most feared Nile crocodile. In the small village of Luganga, stories spread like wildfire about a menacing crocodile known as Osama, a 75-year-old beast said to have caused unfathomable destruction in the 14 years since he was first discovered. Most locals believe that Osama first emerged from Lake Victoria and would gain notoriety as the one responsible for snatching children from river shores and causing boats to capsize with his sheer strength and power. In fact, Locals were so terrified of Osama that a good portion of them would refer to him as a sort of myth or a legend, whereas the others literally thought of him as an incarnate of the devil himself. The children of Luganga would tell tales of horror when recounting their run-ins with the beast, terrorizing everyone in their communities with gruesome stories of having witnessed horrifying tragedies such as watching a fellow villager be taken from the water's edge while fetching water, never to be seen again. After hearing stories like these, many of the locals would avoid going near the lake in fear for their own life, despite the fact that it was one of their main sources for survival. The locals rely heavily on the water from Lake Albert for both sustenance and livelihood. The lake provides them with an abundance of fish, which they can harvest for food, and is a main source of income for many of them, as they would sell this fish to other nearby villages, as well as towns. And of course, the lake is also their primary source for drinking water making approaching the lake essential despite their fears. The villagers estimate that approximately a tenth of their population has been snatched by Osama, leaving them with no choice but to hope that they can outrun him if they ever were unfortunate enough to encounter him. And of course, given their speed, this is much easier said than done. Brothers Paul and Peter Kewalyanga are out fishing on what was a beautiful day at the lake. Little do they know, however, that a large Nile crocodile lurks just a few meters away. And worst of all, it's stalking them. The estimated 16.4 foot Nile croc suddenly explodes out of the water and grabs a stunned Peter by the leg, which is when a massive struggle ensues. The brothers attempt to fend Osama off in a desperate bid to get him to unlatch his notoriously powerful jaws, ones that are capable of delivering bite forces of over 2,000 pounds per square inch, which ranks amongst the most powerful in the animal kingdom. A lesser known fact about these magnificent animals is that they're not always solitary predators. They're actually much more socially intelligent than most people know. In some cases, these prehistoric reptiles are known to form packs or gangs in order to take down larger prey such as buffalo or even elephants. This unique behavior has been observed in crocodiles living in Ramri Island, Myanmar, where crocodiles are known to come out of the swamps in order to hunt down wild buffalo. Although they're rarely known for such teamwork and are quite capable of taking out large prey on their own, this still serves as a reminder that these crocodiles are not just highly adaptable but they clearly possess a level of intellect that isn't given enough credit, which has allowed these animals to thrive in a variety of environments. Paul then recalls hearing what he described as violent tearing, which caused Peter to cry out in agony, shouting out to his brother at the top of his lungs that the bite force of the crocodile has shattered his leg. And within just a few moments, there was nothing but silence. And what was once a highly active patch of water, 
calms into smaller and smaller ripples, which is when a horrifying realization of the fact that he'd likely never see his brother again would cause Paul's heart to sink to his stomach. A team of local divers would find shredded clothing floating in the lake, which later would be confirmed by Paul to have been his brother's. And although he'd never in his life wish he'd be more wrong about something, Paul's suspicions would tragically be confirmed, which led him to conclude that Osama had in all likelihood fully consumed his brother's body. Locals and wildlife officials devised a daring plan to lure him from the lake's depths by using cow lungs as bait. Alex Motamba from the organization would have the following to say about his capture. All Nile crocodiles, like Osama, will eat a human being if they perceive their territory is being encroached on. But our crocodiles are well secured, so I'm not too worried. In an incredible display of courage and ingenuity, locals and wildlife officials were able to finally devise a plan to capture the notorious man-eating crocodile. A team of about 50 people, led by Uganda Wildlife Authority, would use a copper snare to trap the animal's teeth and would eventually be successful in subduing Osama. The Science Times would report at the time that Osama is now part of a successful breeding program run by Uganda crocs. Although humans may not be their natural prey, there are a few circumstances that may lead them to turn to us as a food source. One of the primary reasons is due to human interference with their habitats as well as overfishing in their area. This not only reduces the amount of smaller prey that they can find, but it can also lead to encounters where they can display their notoriously aggressive nature, which in comparison to other members of their species, is much more prevalent in their behavior, meaning they will strike out at anything or anyone that they view as competition or a threat. And while it is well known that now crocodiles in many parts of Africa are feared as man-eaters, these reptiles can actually be quite shy on the contrary, and will try to avoid humans in most circumstances. They also have an excellent memory and are known to remember a human for several years after an encounter, even if no direct contact was made, which is another compliment, of course, to their underrated intellect. If you ever find yourself in now crocodile territory, it's important to remain vigilant in their presence and never do anything to provoke them. The best approach is to respect them from a distance and understand that the risks associated with interacting with them are very real. Nile crocodile attacks on humans are often the result of human-wildlife conflict, and this particularly happens when habitats overlap and close proximity between the two species is present. This can also occur in situations where people are near a body of water, performing tasks such as washing clothes, bathing, or fetching drinking water from the river. The Nile crocodile is widely considered amongst the most dangerous animals in Africa. They kill hundreds of people throughout the continent on a yearly basis. And although many attacks sadly go unreported, the ones that do make it to the public serve as a harsh reminder of just how deadly these ancient predators can be. The following episode depicts one of the most infamous crocodile attacks ever recorded, involving a man who was violently dragged from his boat in Botswana and consumed by a massive Nile crocodile in front of multiple eyewitnesses, including his wife. This is the horrifying true story of Dr. Richard Root's fatal encounter with one of the world's most feared predators. Botswana is a country that sits just above South Africa, right in the middle of the continent. It is known for being one of the most beautiful countries in the world, with almost 40% of its land being preserved for national parks and animal reserves. Some of our world's most diverse ecosystems thrive in this country's breathtakingly beautiful plains. Inhabiting lions, leopards, elephants, rhinos, and buffaloes, it's widely regarded as one of the top tourist destinations in all of Africa. The country is also home to the Limpopo River, 
one of the longest in all of Africa, spanning 1,750 kilometers. The river holds hundreds of species of fish and is surrounded by beautiful scenery and landscapes. Many consider seeing the greenery and surrounded vegetation of the river a uniquely rare experience as well. However, the riverbanks are a whole different story altogether. The river is home to the Nile crocodile, notoriously known as the biggest and most aggressive crocodile in all of Africa. Weighing in at upwards of 750 kilograms and growing to lengths of over 20 feet long, victims who are unlucky enough to encounter this animal in the wild typically have no hope of escaping their massive jaws. On New Year's Day of 2022, a 25-year-old woman in South Africa was dragged away by a crocodile while doing her laundry in the shallow water of the river. And in the very same year, four other people from the same small village had been killed in crocodile attacks, and many more would go out to the river only to mysteriously never return. For many inhabitants of small villages who don't have access to clean water, they're left with no choice but to risk their lives by having to go to the river every day. In another instance, a 25-year-old man and his friend from the Kumbani village were fishing along the shore of the river in February of 2022, and out of nowhere, his friend was charged at by a crocodile and dragged into the river, never to be seen again. The 25-year-old man attempted to search for him, only to get caught in some debris underwater, after which he would tragically drown. These are just some of the notable reported cases of fatal Nile crocodile attacks in the vicinity. Richard Root was a nationally renowned infectious disease expert in the US, and he spent much of his career throughout the 60s to the early 2000s working and studying at some of the top universities in North America. In 2006, he was invited on a two-month trip to Botswana by the University of Pennsylvania to help control the ongoing HIV epidemic in the country. He spent much of his time there working to educate doctors as well as treating patients and children. Richard would lose his first wife in 2001 and then remarry a woman named Rita O'Boyle, who would also accompany him to Botswana. And as time went by, at least to his family, it seemed like working in Botswana had changed Richard for the better, and this was despite the tough working conditions and the long hours. Many that knew him would report that he looked the happiest and most fulfilled that he ever had before, and by all indications, his career was on an upward trend despite his age. On the 19th of March, 2006, Dr. Richard and his wife, along with a friend and colleague of his, Dr. Harvey Friedman, were planning on taking a guided safari through the Thule Nature Reserve. By this point, the trio are about a halfway through their two-month stay in the country, and they decide to take the day off and have some fun. The particular tour that they were on goes through a section of the Limpopo River on the southernmost part of the reserve. The wildlife in the reserve is once again extremely diverse, with giraffes, lions, cheetahs, and water bucks inhabiting the ecosystem, just to name a few. It's also worth noting that this section of the river is one of the only crocodile-free stretches in Botswana, and prior to this, there had never been a crocodile attack, at least in this specific area. However, unknown to the group was that this fact was about to change, and in succession, so too would the lives of many more. Dr. Richard and his friends would board the canoe that morning, with Richard sitting at the very front. The group was split into two different boats, with Rita being about 20 yards behind him on the second one. And so, the group sets off, and Richard's eyes light up as he gets excited about seeing all the native birds in the area. The tour guides gently paddle through the water, scanning the shore for hippos and making sure they didn't surprise animals suddenly with their presence, because of course many of these animals are territorial and are not exactly welcoming to visitors. Unbeknownst to the group, a large Nile crocodile that somehow managed to sneak its way into the Thule Nature Reserve would lock its sights on Richard's canoe. It's important to note that Nile crocodiles can sense the smallest of vibrations in the water, and they use their vision to stalk larger prey. And so, all the tiny vibrations and movement caused by the boats and the paddles 
despite everyone's efforts to be discreet about it, had of course attracted this now crocodile, who was now sitting right below the stern of the boat, with its eyes just poking through the surface at Richard, waiting for an opportune moment to strike. And suddenly, out of nowhere, one of the guides spots the crocodile and yells croc, but just as he says that, the crocodile leaps at Richard, making a loud splashing noise which startles the group, and before Richard has time to react, the croc then lunges at him and grabs him by his arm, locking its jaws shut which would result in a brief struggle as the guides attempt to free Richard from its mouth. The powerful and massive croc would then pull Richard out of the canoe, and then in front of his horrified companions and a devastated Rita, the crocodile within just seconds pulls Richard into the muddy abyss of the river. Rita and the other eyewitnesses on the boat are left petrified, as within seconds, an adventure which was supposed to be fun and exciting would turn into the most traumatizing experience of her life, with the only remains of Richard being the large blanket of blood which was left behind at the scene of the attack. Both locals and police showed up to search for the body that day, but to no avail, and after days of rescue attempts, they would then lose hope of finding his body, realizing that the croc most likely consumed it in its entirety. It wouldn't be until March 23rd, however, a few days after the tragic ordeal, that Richard's mangled corpse would turn up on the shore of the river, not too far away from where the attack had occurred. The culprit croc, however, was never found, and although his wife Rita would be relieved that his body had been recovered, she would still be in denial for a long time afterward about whether he was truly gone. Richard was a man who dedicated his life to helping other people. He was an educator who was not just an expert in his field, but was well renowned in some of the best medical institutions in the US. Thousands of his patients and colleagues would highly regard him and rely on his services in Botswana, and unfortunately because of one unlucky event, one of their biggest pillars of support would tragically be taken from them. Despite the many potential hazards presented by some of the world's most treacherous places, this still doesn't stop many humans from risking their lives to explore them. Many of these people have a deep passion for what they do, and this passion for the most part outweighs any potential dangers that these ventures may pose to their lives, and it's their willingness to go where most wouldn't dare that continues to contribute to much of the knowledge that we've amassed about these lesser known and lesser explored parts of our planet. So far this morning, the rivers started off pretty, pretty intense. In April of 2007, experienced expedition paddlers Ben Stukesbury, Chris Korbulik, and Hendrik Kotzia decided to take on a nearly impossible feat. One place remained out of reach, the legendary Congo region of Africa. Civil wars and dangerous wildlife make the area nearly impossible to explore. When Ben was given the rare chance to go, he prepared for the worst case scenarios. but. How do you prepare yourself for the loss of a close friend? Despite knowing the potential risks and dangers of this particular venture, the men were regardless of this set on testing the limits of their capabilities, and were furthermore confident that they were prepared for the worst, if it came down to it. On expeditions like this, you do your best to prepare for the worst. But no matter how much you've prepared, when the worst happens, when you lose someone, Nobody's ever ready for it. We've heard firsthand accounts of crocodile attacks in this particular river, but the bank maybe has just as much danger as the river itself with hippos. Murchison Falls National Park is host to this amazing array of wildlife, from lions to elephants to giraffes, pretty much all the big five, but also a huge concentration of crocodiles. It's super dangerous from when you put the boat on the water to when you take it off. But we weren't just like, hey, let's go. It's like we can let the hippos know that we're there. We can stay quiet and sneak past the crocodiles. Like there were things that we could do to really mitigate that risk. And for us, it was a rite of passage. Despite this bold claim, however, little did the trio realize the reality of just how probable a worst case scenario was in this particular stretch of river. 
If you said no to Murchison Falls, the trip's over, really. And so sometimes you have to say yes, even if you feel so scared. It is also worth mentioning that the population of Crocs in the Lakuga region had risen dramatically as a result of bloody skirmishes that occurred in 15 years of fighting. Up to 5.4 million people are estimated to have been killed during the Civil War, many of whose bodies were dumped into the rivers. This in turn has said to have caused the river's crocs to develop a taste for human flesh. The day of the expedition has now arrived. It's gorgeous out right now. Doesn't adjust. The men gear up, do some last minute preparations, and finally set off on their epic journey. We wanted to run the headwaters of the Nile River towards this last stretch of the Congo that would complete the source to sea descent that Hendry had started, connecting the dots with stretches of those rivers. We'd be coming out going across there. There was a lot of talk about risk from having clean water all the way to dangerous wildlife in the river. The trio managed to complete the Ruzuzi River part of their journey incident-free, and things went quite smoothly, as per all accounts. Well, at least as smooth as can be, given the circumstances. And all of a sudden, this most significant anxiety just disappears into the singular focus of one moment to the next. Feeling like every single movement you make counts. The men then spend the night of December 5th at an IRC guest house in Kalemi before taking on the Lukuga. As a man enjoyed some Tanzanian waragi, a kind of local moonshine, Hendrik was entertaining Chris and Ben with a few of his father's horror stories from his experiences during the war in Angola. The next day now arrives. Being a kayaker in Central Africa, inevitably you're gonna have crocs in the river. Nile crocodiles are huge. They can be up to 20 feet long, and they'll hunt you. They often hide underwater, waiting to strike. And if a crocodile attacks you, there's nothing you can do. We were much more likely to see a crocodile in a very, very flat river with no current so this is the start of the supermarket. So the supermarket is where the crocs hang out in order to feed. You're the food in their supermarket. The risk of the crocodile isn't when it's sitting on the bank in the sun. The risk is when it is in the water and you can't see it. As a few hours go by, Chris notices a 12-foot croc on the bank bigger than anything he'd seen thus far on the trip. He then alerts Hendrik, who quickly groups the team together and lays out the protocol. Hendrik advises the team that they must stay tight and pay close attention to the banks. He mentioned that if anybody saw a croc, they were to accelerate as a group and attempt to outrun it before it got too close. Later that night, the men stayed downriver of the village of Niemba. As they had dinner with a group of locals, the men asked the group how the IRC could help them to which they initially responded with the obvious answer, we need clean water and education. A small fellow then looks them straight in the eye and mentions that locals have been having a major problem with crocodiles, mentioning that 125 people had been taken from this area alone in the last 20 years. That day started like many other days with Hendry telling us to get ready for the best day ever. Very interested. Living the best day ever was his philosophy, and it was very much about just wanting to be nowhere else. You know, looking for this ultimate adventure in a kayak. We were around the corner from that bridge, that village, where we were going to resupply but we were getting into this extra hazardous crocodile zone. We felt comfortable acknowledging that risk and continuing on. 
we misunderstood the real danger that existed in that river. Henry was talking us through the experience. We were able to just focus on the sound of his voice and focus on his direction in order to not get overwhelmed. After two days of extreme paddling, the men then arrive at a 90 degree turn which they had seen on Google Earth whilst mapping out their expedition routes. As Ben lagged behind the team after struggling through the last rapid, he notices Hendrik signaling him to hurry forward as Chris spotted three or four small crocs slip into the water from the riverbanks. The trio quickly group together as per Hendrik's protocol and begin paddling hard in an attempt to outswim the reptiles. The men aggressively paddle out for about 250 yards when all of a sudden, Chris catches a flash of motion from his peripherals. And off to the left side of Hendrik's stern and directly behind Ben, Chris turns to see a gaping pair of jaws powerfully lunge out of the water towards Hendrik's body. I think we were on either side of him and we looked back and he just screams. <laughs> and he had a croc's head that was the size of his upper body latched onto his shoulder right here. And then he was upside down and his kayak was just violently spinning. I got that sinking feeling of just knowing we couldn't do anything. For contrast to the surface swimming crocs that most paddlers are accustomed to, this particular croc had attacked from the depths with incredible stealth and a perfectly placed strike. The estimated 2,000 pound crocodile, who was said to have been at least 15 feet long, most likely took Hendrik to the bottom of the river, life jacket and all, and rolled him there until he drowned. What's even more horrific, Henrik was likely conscious for the first few seconds of the attack as a croc clamped down on his chest and neck with 5,000 pounds of pressure per square inch, a bite force that remains unmatched throughout the animal kingdom. Shortly after witnessing the horrifying attack, the men then snap out of their state of shock, quickly realizing that their own lives were still at risk, at which point the men began frantically paddling back to safety. After racing downstream for a mile, the two men then alerted locals and authorities at the village of Kabea Meiji and desperately begged for a motorboat to take them back upstream. This was of course a last ditch attempt to recover Henrik's body. To their shock and surprise however, upon requesting a motorboat, the locals mentioned that the village no longer carried any boats, revealing that they had given up on traveling by water after seven locals had been snatched overboard by crocs since 2006. About 20 minutes later, the entire village, consisting of several hundred people, had gathered on a bridge overseeing the Lakuga. Why him instead of either of us that were two feet away from him? And it was during this time that Henrik's boat and paddle would float into view, with his water bottles and equipment still neatly tucked in to the center beam. In fact, the kayak was said to be in such good condition that one eyewitness of the scene had mentioned it seemed as though he had been plucked from his kayak by the hand of God it literally looked untouched. Watching Henry's boat float down without him in it was the first time I had ever felt loss. Despite intense search efforts in an attempt to salvage at least a piece of Henry for his family, not even partial remains could be recovered and the search was inevitably called off as a result. The following story has been dubbed one of the most notorious crocodile attacks in Australian history. This horrific attack took place in what is commonly known as the largest unspoiled wilderness in northern Australia, the majestic Cape York Peninsula, a magnificent and pristine land which despite its undeniable beauty also presents a variety of dangers for humans. The Cape's interior is a landscape of vast sweeping plains pocketed with rivers, lakes, and waterholes. It is also well known for its diverse repertoire of wildlife, and many of the creatures that inhabit the peninsula are not just capable of, but are known to attack humans, even unprovoked. From mammals such as dingoes, wild pigs, and wild cattle, to venomous snakes and spiders on land, 
to aquatic creatures such as sharks, the notoriously venomous box jellyfish, and of course, crocodiles. Huge crocodiles. There was something unique about the Cape York crocs at the time in which the attack took place. These Cape York crocs, they were not used to humans, meaning their natural fear of us was non-existent in these parts. And tragically, a number of attacks by most of the animals mentioned above have resulted in attack victims sustaining life-altering injuries, and in some cases, even death. In October of 2004, experienced campers and grandparents of two little children, Alicia and Bill Sorahan, their family friends, and first-time campers Andrew Kerr and his wife Dee, not to mention four-month-old baby Kelly, as well as three other family members and friends, had all set up camp about 30 to 40 meters away from the beach at a famous Cape York camping spot. They had been camping where the beach had hit the bush, which is considered a safe spot to set up camp by most accounts. The Sorahans had been camping in this area for six to seven years at the same time and same exact spot, which is also why they had no concerns about four-month-old Kelly Kerr being present for the camping trip. It's 4 a.m. on the first night of the trip. Everyone is fast asleep in their tents with their loved ones. It's quiet and it's dark. A 4.6 meter long crocodile emerges out of the calm waters and makes its way up the beach towards the main camp. He goes around the family's four wheel drive specifically. He comes around the vehicle and stands in front of Andrew's tent. It's important to note that during the time of the year at which this attack took place, the temperature at Cape York, Queensland can be scorchingly hot, which is why Andrew's tent had the tent flaps open and the fly screen down. Andrew's wife Diane hears a rustle outside her tent, and as she peers towards the front of the tent, she sees the crocodile silhouette standing motionless in front of the tent. She freezes, and the adrenaline kicks in, and she's extremely alert now. She looks right at Andrew who's fast asleep and nudges him awake as quietly as she could. And as Andrew lifts his body up from a laying position, eyes locked on the silhouette of the 4.6 meter reptilian beast, it lunges towards Andrew through the fly door, sinks its teeth into Andrew's hips and begins dragging him out of the tent towards the beach. And this is of course because crocs are notorious for drowning their prey before consumption typically locking their jaws onto one of their victim's limbs and performing their trademark death roll, rotating their entire bodies rapidly in circular motions causing total amputation of the limb, leaving their victim immobile and making it impossible to escape. As he's being dragged down towards his seemingly imminent death, Andrew yells to his terrified wife Dee to get four-month-old baby Kelly to safety, who was also in the tent with them, fast asleep. Frozen in horror for a split second as she tries to process the fact that her baby may no longer have a father if she doesn't act quick. Or worse, she may not have a baby if she doesn't get the situation under control and get little baby Kelly to safety. These maternal instincts seem to kick in as adrenaline surges through her veins. Her fight or flight response allows her to muster enough courage to remove Kelly from the tent, or at least what was left of it, and bring her to safety. Meanwhile, the angry croc is getting closer and closer to the water's edge. Andrew begins hurling punches at the croc in desperation with hopes that it would release him. But the sheer size of the beast made Andrew's attempts futile, as he clearly stood no chance against one of the most formidable and not to mention ancient predators that this planet has ever seen. Andrew was in serious trouble of being dragged into the water at this point where his chances of surviving the situation would drop to nearly impossible considering the damage he had already sustained. Hearing all the commotion, Alicia and Bill come rushing out of their tent. Alicia sees Andrew beating the crocodile as he's screaming simultaneously and being drugged into the water. What comes next is truly shocking. In an act of absolute heroism, Alicia jumps onto the crocodile's head, causing it to spin around furiously which caused its head to break her nose upon impact, as well as a number of her teeth, which instantly fell out of her mouth. 
The crocodile then grabs Alicia by her arm and viciously attempts to rip it off, violently shaking its head side to side as it does with most of its prey. The croc, now furious, looked like it was ready to deal some fatal damage now. Jason, Alicia's son, then enters the scene, armed with a gun, out of nowhere, and bravely planted his knee on the back of the crocodile's head and shot the crocodile in the back of the head a total of four times, which instantly killed the croc, putting an end to what could have resulted in multiple fatalities had it not been for the heroics of grandmother Alicia and her son Jason. Fortunately, Andrew did not lose too much blood, and he was able to make a full recovery from his injuries. On the other hand, grandmother Alicia, who was bleeding heavily, had to be taken by her husband Bill and one of the other men, put into a land cruiser, and driven away to the nearest Royal Flying Doctor Zone, as there was concern on whether she'd make it or not, due to the extreme blood loss and duration of the drive to the runway at the Kalpoar crossing. How long of a drive did Alicia have to endure while sustaining life-threatening injuries? That car ride took seven hours for the trio, but Alicia, the hero of this story, along with her son Jason, were ready for whatever the night that they will never forget had to offer. The risks that come with being bitten by a crocodile not only include major blood loss, but also a high risk of developing an infection as a result of a bite. Due to the high levels of bacteria in the mouths of these reptiles, it's extremely important to get treatment, no matter how minor or major a bite is. There are many who speculated what the cause of this attack could have been, including pro-Australian fisherman and YouTuber GT Buster, who was present at the scene with his fishing crew and provided much of the footage that you see here. And after experiencing something out of a horror movie, once again, heroic grandmother Alicia Sorohan and first-time camper Andrew Kerr managed to miraculously survive a potentially fatal scenario, and they continue to wear their battle scars with pride, with a story to tell for the ages. If this compilation piqued your interest, then perhaps check out the other marathons I've composed, featuring the world's deadliest bear, big cat, and shark attacks. They will pop up on the end screen of this video within the next few seconds. As always, this is Animal Al, and thanks for watching When Animals Attack.